Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobo and in today's video I will show you how to create an archive folder within Outlook. As a desktop support personnel or help desk, you will be doing this a lot. You will get troubleshooting tickets that simply ask, can you create an archive for me or can you help me locate an archive file for me? Be sure to stick around because I will show you the difference between a PST and OST file because they're quite different and the reason why you should know this and its location within user's local profile. So let's get to it. There are a couple of different ways to go about creating an archive file. There's a longer way and there's a shorter way. I will first show you the longer way, which is if you look to your left hand side on the upper left corner, there's a, a button called file, which is right up here. It's usually yellow like this. Go ahead and select that. This will basically take you to your account settings. Within here, or when you just need to select account settings and then account settings once more. And here, when we have this pop up, it will be a second tab over here where it says data file. Once we select that here, we can add an archive file. If you want to add an archive file, you would simply select add. And here you will basically choose a location for your Outlook archive file. In our case, this is the default location for, we're just going to leave it at that. So we're just going to rename it to our new archive. So that way we can find it and I can show you exactly where it's at and just go ahead and select OK. Now, if you noticed on our left hand side right here, a new thing has appeared and this is our archive folder. So let's go ahead and close this so we can see what we have here. This is our new archive and if you expand that there's really nothing there besides delete items folder and search folders file. If you want to recommend the users, you can simply say if you want to create new folders within, you can simply do so by right clicking it and then create a new folder. They can name it whatever they want. Let's say they can call it inbox, right? They can call it inbox and now they have an inbox folder and if they want to drag and drop things from their inbox. Right now mine is empty, but if there were emails right here, they would select on their main inbox and they would dra drag and drop their files that they want to store inside of this archive folder. You can also set up a rule that basically moves all of your old emails into this new inbox. And you can set this up based off of how old it is. Let's say if emails are older than you know six months, have them automatically moved to here. And again, you can create new files, or I should say new folders. Let's say this is just a, a name, let's say uh, uh, old emails, right? Let's just call it old emails. Now we have a folder called old emails. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine too. But in a nutshell, this is how you do it real quick. Another way to do it is just from within here, and this is a little bit faster. If you select this second icon here where it says new items, if you select that and go all the way down, see where it says more items, let that expand and then move to the right and you're going to have an option to select Outlook data file. This essentially does the same thing. And this one, we're just going to call it second archive. And a lot of people that need help with this will also have, chances are we'll have multiple archives. And then once we select that, then we're going to have our second archive folder here that we can do the exact same stuff that we did with this previous one, right? Now, let me show you the difference between that and an OST file and where these are located. So let's say somebody, you know, contacts you, let's say your help desk or desktop support and they say, hey, I can't find my archive file. Well, I'll show you the default location where they are located. I'm just going to minimize this real quick. And then we're going to go to our root of C, right? And then we're going to go to users local profile. And this is located in the root of C. And then we're going to select users. And here, in our case, we're logged in as the administrator. So whatever their login uh, login ID is, that's probably what's going to be the name of their local profile in here. So let's say I logged in with Koboman1. This is where uh, the archives would be that I've just created. However, I'm logged in as administrator, so I'm just going to go inside of that. So just to kind of go back real quick, we are in a root of C, right? Root of C, folder called users. And then we selected the name for the login of this user. In my case, it's the administrator. The Outlook archives are by default located in our documents folder. So if we double click documents, we will see our Outlook files folder. Once we open that, we can see all the archives that we created, right? So let me just go back here again, because I really like to show this as slow as possible. So it's root of C, users, login ID for the user that's logged in documents, and then Outlook files, right? Now, this is not to be confused. Uh, okay, let me show you real quick here. 
what the file extension of this is. You can see that it's a .pst. This is why it's called a .pst. This is why it's also called a .pst, I should say. So Outlook Data File, also known as .pst. Now, this is different from an OST, which will, which will be located in our app data. So let's go back to our um, local profile. So we're inside of our local profile. Now we need to go inside of an app data folder. In our case, it's by default app data is set to be invisible, but we know it's there. There's a folder within here called app data, right? It's hidden by default. Um, so in order to go to it, we can just simply type in backslash app data and it's there. Now we're inside of our app data. Just to kind of go over it again, root of C, users, name, login name for the person that's logged in. In my case, it's an administrator, and then app data, right? Now we're going to look for our OST file. And the next place, a couple of more folders that we need to navigate. The next one is local, and then Microsoft, right? See? App data, local, Microsoft. And then one more, which is also called Outlook. Now, once we go inside of this, then there won't be a file name in their OST at all because I am not connected to the Exchange server right now. As you can see here, there is no, I'm actually not connected. But once you go in here, there will be a file with similar icons as the, uh, the archive folder, but it will be called OST. The difference between that and the archive file is that the OST is essentially offline version of your inbox. So let's say you connect to the Exchange server. The first time you connect, it's going to start populating this. All of this is going to start to get populated because you'll have emails, this and that. Well, that has to go somewhere, right? Well, it's stored inside of the OST file, which is typically located here, right? I'm just going to create a file here just so it's better, easier to visualize. And we're going to call it, um, you know, offline email, right? Because I really want you guys to understand this. And the extension will be OST, right? It will be something, the way it's going to look like is actually going to be similar to, uh, basically, a lot of times it's the uh, name of the user. So in our case, it's the administrator. So it'll be their login ID. And then, you know, some, you know, numbers or, or letters, you know, depending how it's set up. But it's going to be offline email for that user, right? So that's how you would basically reset it. So let's say there are any issues with the inbox, their local inbox, not the archive. You would basically go in here, right? And then you would delete their OST file. You delete it. So when the user goes back in here, it's going to be blank. They're, all their stuff will be gone, but it will be, it will repopulate. On underneath here, you would see that, you know, when it connects to the Exchange server, it's going to say updating the folders, and it's going to eventually update this, all of this. Well, since I already have you guys here, let me show you something real quick, and that is how to reset email. So let's say a person's profile is corrupted, their email is corrupted, and there are issues that, uh, you know, they're causing email. You know, they can't receive, they can't send, this and that. One way to reset their email profile is if you go to Control Panel, I'm sure you guys know how to you know go to Control Panel. If you're in Windows 10, just type in Control Panel. And if you're in Windows uh, 7 or something older, you can just go to Start and Control Panel. All right? Once you have Control Panel open, look for an icon called Mail. This controls basically everything that is about your mail, except you don't have Outlook open. If you have Outlook open, you won't be able to make any changes. So make sure that Outlook is closed before you mess with these settings. Go ahead and open up your mail, uh, double click your mail icon. And here you can view your email accounts. So if you select email accounts, let me slow down here, I guys, I don't want to go too fast. So if you select email accounts, you will get this pop up and it looks similar to what we did earlier, right? It's, it's identical. It's essentially the same thing. If you go to data files here, we can see our archive files here. You can remove them, add them, this and that. And of course, if, if you want to add somebody's uh, archive folder, you can certainly do that. Let's say it's not added here and it's not visible in their Outlook. This is how you do it. You just click add and then you look for it, right? You will look for it find it and click OK, and then, then it's going to appear on their left-hand side. Then that way they can see their Outlook um, archive again, right? Here we can delete, also delete and remove email accounts. If you select new, we can connect to the exchange or, you know, do whatever we want. And that's how we would add a new email account. 
uh, this user can you know log into it this and that but how do we fully reset it right let's go ahead and close this and the way we to do that is by removing the profile for the user and that would be the third tab down here right if we click on that the second tab here is just same place we were here a minute ago right a second ago i should say for data files right so it's essentially the same thing we can get to from here but anyways what i'm talking about is profile email profile right we can reset this and create a brand new profile that everything is brand new to it i mean there's a way to reset this if you go manually and look for the folders uh, that, that are related to this in app data, this and that, but this is an easy way for you guys to uh, actually do it and it will just do it for you. So if you select show profiles, you can see that I have one profile. This is mine profile. Let's say this one is corrupt. Well, we can actually create a new one. So if we just click add and we name it new profile, right? Let's call it new profile. Click OK. Now we can collect, uh, select new profile, right? We can, you know, once it connects, you put in all the information, it's going to create a new one here, right? So I went ahead and created a new profile, right? Now we have a new profile. So how do we actually use that new profile, right? Well, if we go back in and just click OK, whenever the user launches Outlook again, it's going to go to their old one, right? And why is that? Well, because we haven't selected a new profile. So if we open it back up, go to Show Profiles, we can see that there are two of them, right? But what we need to actually change is always use this profile down here right and then we need to select it and check new profile right and then click apply click ok and now when the user launches outlook again it's going to create a brand new profile it's going to reset everything for them and hopefully resolve all the issues right all right guys thank you so much for watching i try to make this one as as clear to understand as possible just a reminder, I have a Patreon page if you'd like to support me. Uh, there's a link in the description box below. Also, I will be posting this video on Twitch. I'm thinking about actually using uh, using using Twitch for some live sessions, uh, I guess free tech support or whatnot. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, please let me know in below. And then I might set up a, uh, a scheduled type of, I guess, meeting, if we will, where you guys can ask me questions. We can resolve some text tech related or it related desktop support issues together thank you so much for watching guys i appreciate you very much have a good one bye bye